Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by WBOA, which is Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Freda Brown, owner of Divorce Financial Services, and our guest today is Stephanie uh, Connors. And Stephanie, what do you do? Um, I sell commercial real estate and lease with KW Commercial, which is Keller Williams Commercial Division. Okay. And uh, what exactly is commercial real estate? Okay, so it would be um, a multifamily over six units, you know, apartment buildings. Um, it could be a retail space, uh, you know, for a restaurant or a store. There's warehouses, there's industrial property, um, strip malls. Wow. Or, and mall, you know, malls of all kinds. <laughs> right, so it encompasses a lot. Yes. And you know, as far as the business owners that are lo watching right now, how does someone decide if they definitely need an office? Like if they've been working at home, what's that step to know, you know, I'm ready for an office? And if so, where, you know, where should they start looking? Okay, so the when they need to move into an office would be kind of a personal decision for them if they're getting a lot of customers that they don't want to meet at their home anymore um, then it would be a good time to make a move and what they need to consider is who their customer is and do, do would their customer want to be near um, you know, some people will travel to get to a destination mm -hmm. or some kind of businesses they want, you know, to, to be convenient to where they live. So you would need to decide um, who your customer is and how close to them you need to be. Okay. Um, for, for one thing, um, there's a lot of factors that you need to consider when looking for the perfect space. Mm -hmm. and so what are those factors that you need? Okay, so um, the size is important. Um, you want to leave some room for growth so you don't have to move your location again in a couple of years if your business grows. That's true. Um, you, you would um, want to be in a place where the businesses around you can support, you know, the, that you're going for the same customers. So they complement you. Yes, complementary businesses. That's so important. If you're opening a restaurant, should you go next door to McDonald's? Because <laughs> 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 they figured it out for you. But go ahead. I think that's just <laughs> yeah, actually, some uh, there's a lot of fast food. You often see Burger King and McDonald's that's right true. near each yeah. other mm -hmm. uh, um, because they're at, um, they can capitalize on each other's advertising and marketing. Okay. Sometimes it's good to be near your competition because they're spending the money to draw the customer to the area and then well, I you never can think of that. Yeah. Yes. Um, visibility is something that you should think of. Um, like say your business is doing prosthetics, making prosthetics. Um, you don't need high visibility because that isn't an, an in, it isn't an impulse buy. It's something that, you know, the doctor prescribes and they come to your address. They're okay. going right. to come see Not everybody's lost their leg and needs a new leg. Right. right. You, you don't have to have a, a visible location to entice them to come in because they're going to come in any, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so you, if, you had, if you had like a shop that you had, like a specialty shop, you would want that someplace where there's high, high traffic volume so people would stop in just because it looks interesting to go into. Yes, that. yes. Right. And you need to consider parking, you know, mm -hmm. um, if you have a high turnover, uh, like if people only visit your shop to r run in and get some milk or something like that, then you don't need as much parking as if it's like a gym or um, some place where the uh, sit down restaurant where someone will be staying for an hour or more. Mm -hmm. Okay, that and makes sense. Uh, so, do um, towns have regulations as to what kind of parking you need for the facility that you're going to open? Yes, some um, businesses are regulated for that, and that reminds me, um, zoning is important too for a consideration. Is the location that you're thinking of um, zoned for the use that your business um, needs? So, like if. Um, 
I wanted to open a medical marijuana place. That that's <laughs> we, someone wanted to do that in my town, and the zoning what, where they wanted it, it was it was close to the schools, and so the town said, no, we don't want that there. Mm -hmm. It's not zoned for you. Yes, and like for a car dealership, some towns regulate how many they mm -hmm. want their. Um, there to be so oh, okay. licensing is another consideration will mm -hmm. you know are licenses available mm -hmm. for what y your use is is it better to um, if you're just starting out to lease an office or actually attempt to buy the building what do you have any advice okay. on that yes um, if you're planning on staying in the same place for 15 years or or more Sometimes y you really should consider um, buying instead of leasing. Okay. Um, there's a there's a lot of different factors that go into it. To buy, you need a significant down payment. Most banks charge between twenty and thirty percent down. Mm -hmm. um, it takes more time to get. You know, the loan process can take a couple months sometimes. Yeah. There's okay. closing costs. A commercial appraisal can be upwards of $2,000. Whereas uh, if a space is vacant for a lease, you can ha make that happen really fast. Okay. You know, so maybe so the thought is when you're going, making that decision to leap from your home office to a, a real office is, is look for a place to lease first and then move forward once you have the capital built up that you've made up made um, the amount and you're ready to to move forward just like when I the first house that we rented it had um, no lights you, you couldn't oh, turn the you only had one switch that could turn on the light and you had to go all the way halfway across the room to turn it turn off the light when you went to bed mm -hmm. and so when we built our house we have sp multiple switches you know every right. every single room has a, an off and on from the entrance room to the end exit of the, of the room and so it's something you learn when you, you you're in a building what what you need mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, just saying this is what I want I'm going to make this great big I want this beautiful building to be like this when you haven't even tried it out to know what you need exactly yeah so okay. what are some of the advantages of leasing would you say over buying okay for, well um, a low initial investment is yeah. one um, then uh, the tax deduction, you can de deduct okay. the amount of your lease um, from your, you know, that's a business expense. So um, certain, depending on your lease, you might not have to pay any um, maintenance or repairs. It, um, some, it, that's where um, the lease becomes very important because there is what's called a triple net lease mm -hmm. that you're responsible for the taxes on the building, even though you don't own it. Um, wow. You know your portion uh, of that you occupy, um, that and your common area maintenance. Sometimes the owner will defer that to the tenants, mm -hmm. and like if there were ten tenants, they'd each pay a tenth of the snow plowing, the landscaping, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, so do you, uh, so do you help them um, build that into their lease when you're when you're when you're working at you help people get leases? Yes. Yes, um, I refer them to the, an attorney. That's really the more the expertise of an attorney. Okay. But I can, you know, I can t tell them things to look out for and explain what uh, you know triple net is or what they're responsible for. But then the details of the lease they should really have their attorney look at. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Okay, and are there any disadvantages to um, owning the building as opposed to leasing? There can be. Um, sometimes a building, it, it doesn't happen often, but if traffic patterns change, like all of a sudden a mall is built oh, and, okay. you know, then, all, then people aren't really coming to the area, your um, building could depreciate. Okay, um, makes sense. And then there, you know, like w I said before, the capital investment, um, mm -hmm. if you, as long as you've got that, that's good. And it can be a, a good thing to build, you know, equity. And after your mortgage is paid off, then you, you wouldn't have any costs, you know, you wouldn't be paying rent, rent right, if you own. Right. Um, that's an advantage. Um, 
disadvantages, you're responsible for everything, mm -hmm. you know. It, um, what about uh, if someone was thinking about starting to invest and they wanted to invest with commercial real estate? Where would they start? What should they look for and what should they do? Yes, um, investing in real estate is always a good idea in my opinion, <laughs> but um, commercial investments can bring a better return on your money. Mm -hmm. um, it's good because p the, you're, you're renting to business owners who have a real vested interest in keeping the property looking nice mm -hmm. um, because that's their business mm -hmm. um, projection. You know? Correct. And that's yes. a good point. As opposed to rent, somebody renting your house, they don't care because it's not their house. Yeah, right? yeah. They, they may or may not care. They Hopefully know. they would, but <laughs> some of them don't. But if, if somebody just doesn't care about their business, then they're not going to make, you know, gonna their make customers are going to see that. And also the relationship is professional. Most um, Tenants are, you know, LLCs, and they they're it's a business to business relationship with with the um, owner usually. Mm -hmm. um, so if it, let's just say I decided to do that, would I contact a, yourself, like a real estate agent, and would they show you a list of what they thought was suitable for? How would you start that? Where would yes, the process start? Okay, for so investing. Um, I would want to know, like, you know, what risks if you wanted, like, mm -hmm. uh, if you were um, willing to take, um, because different types of properties have different risk levels, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, the amount that you could invest would determine what kind of properties that you were would mm -hmm. be able to get. Um, the banks, when they're lending, they look at the income that the building brings in as well as your income. Oh, okay. Uh, and That's a your good consideration, yes. And if if you're new, sometimes it they look at it a little bit stricter mm -hmm. because it's the first property you've owned. So, you know, they they'd want the the performance of the building to be better. And mm -hmm. so the properties that are on the market for commercial real uh, real estate. So are they generally already occupied by tenants and you're passing along the tenants to uh, the, the new yes, purchaser? Yes, so if you buy a commercial property that has tenants in it, if they have a lease, you have to honor their lease. Okay. You know, the you lease stays with the property. <laughs> but um, if, it's, if, they're not, if they're just going month to month, they could, you could keep them or, or not. Mm -hmm. So, so that's another mm -hmm. advantage of investing in commercial real estate over residential is it's, it, there aren't as many laws governing, you know, besides the lease, um, if, if, you, if somebody isn't paying you, you then it's easier to, to get them out. Than, okay. Like in residential, it can be a real headache. Right, it can be <laughs> difficult to accomplish. And so is that right. the same for a, uh, a nine, what did, what did you say for, um, a, an apartment complex that's nine over, over nine oh, units. Over six units. Oh, over six units. Yeah, then you have to go by the residential. Then you go the rules. Okay. Yes. So it's a little bit different okay. than, than a business to right. business. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And if right. anyone was going to sell, like where do you start if, you're th if you have a commercial property and you're thinking about selling? What's your first step with that? Okay. Um, I strongly recommend getting um, an official a commercial appraisal, okay, because that can make you know sure that your property is priced right, and you have a tool of an independent third party. Because people will think, oh, you're the broker, you're just trying to make you know <laughs> more money on possible. it. This is yeah. a, an appraisal is this is somebody does this for a for their only living is pricing property, and and they they have a lot of details, they have a lot of drawings, and so mm -hmm. on. Commercial appraisal. Sometimes their buyer might, the bank might even be able to use that appraisal, um, depending on the bank. Okay. Um, so that's an important step in finding um, a broker that networks a lot is good because you might not want your, say you have a strip mall, you might not want it in the p newspaper for sale because then the Tenants are going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. um, they they might start moving if their lease is near 
because they do, they don't want the uncertainty of not knowing. I don't know. People are funny sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes the owner will not want it broadcasted all over that their property's for sale. But mm -hmm. so if you network a lot, if you out there talking to people in different networking groups like the WBOA, <laughs> um, then you you can let people know about it without you know more, have it be more discreet. Without print Excellent. advertising. Um, well, that was great. A lot of information uh, and a lot of things to think about if you're a business person who's uh, staying you know, at, at a home business and how to grow your business and being out there is, is a place, is a way to grow your business mm -hmm. by being, uh, being able to see. So um, you've got some valuable information you gave us today and I hope our watchers um, uh, will take the time and, and look you up on our WBOA website. Uh, Stephanie Connors, we have a great directory uh, for all the members um, that we have that cover a lot of um, occupations. So if you want more information about WBOA or um, any of us here today, uh, WBOA.org. Thank, Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you.